All right. Yes. How do I get an 800 credit score 2019? All right. The truth actually might shock you. It's exciting. Okay. Went to my FICO, got this information. You're going to know how to get the 800 FICO score. And we are live. I appreciate you all coming to the live, watching the replays, being a part of this on the weekends. All right. 2019 has kicked off with a bang. I'm excited. I'm going to say hello to the subscribe tribe members that are coming in, and then we're going to get right into it. I made a whole presentation for y'all how you can get this 800 credit score in 2019. Okay. So good to see everybody. Hi. Hey, everybody's flow. Oh, wow. Trickling. Nice, nice, nice. Let me make sure I got all the chat on. Got the live chat. Yes. Yes. All right. Marlon Princess Rashida, heavy hitter. Mr. Spielberg. Hey, how are you? Hello. Hello. Fred Lords Jedi Lungs. What's up? We're giving some shout outs to everybody. Larry, DJ. Thank you so much. Lena. Lena. Hello. Ace. Hi. All right. Let's do this. Peaky ATL. Good to see you from Atlanta. Stan. Hi. Dark Knight. Holla. Holly Clark. Summer Snow. Good to see everybody coming in. I appreciate you. We'll let some people get in. You the man, your program works. Had my bankruptcy taken off and repo off Equifax. Michael Kemner, that's amazing. Michael says, you the man. Your program works. Had my bankruptcy taken off and repo off Equifax. That's awesome. James, hello. Shout out to everybody. I really appreciate you coming in. I'm excited to give you this information about how you can get the 800 FICOs. Man, keep it tight, Jerome. Keep it tight. All right. Got the new shirt. Okay. Shout out to Jerome with the steady cam. Appreciate you. That's right. Jerome, keep it tight. All right. Got a Jerome shirt. If y'all want a Jerome shirt, let me know. All right. So here we go. Shirt is dope. All right. Great. So here we go. Let's get into it. You guys come for the real deal. We're going to uh, dispel a lot of myths here. We're talking about the FICO score. We're talking about FICO, 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 how you can get that real deal 800 score. The most common FICO score is eight. Okay. That's the most readily used out there right now to date. Okay. We're not talking about nonsense like this new ultra FICO. That's not even out yet. All right. And, uh, Jerome should show his face I like this shirt. Thank you. And then, um, we're talking about the FICO eight, the one that is most readily used. Now there's all this stuff FICO two for mortgages. There's a bank card FICO. There's a lot of things I've been going through my FICO. I've got it. I'm telling you, if you are uh, able to get your investment on with the, my FICO app, do it because they literally tell you how you can be the highest achiever in my FICO. But not if you can't, hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell for notifications so you get this information. All right, so let's start with the FICO highest achievers, the 800 FICOs. We know that 35% is on-time payment history, okay? And I just go ahead and assume and I say on-time payment history. 35% is payment history. But I always say on-time payment history because you know 98% of the my FICO leaders, the people with the 800s, 98% have no missed payments. They have nothing over 60 days. They have no collections. They have no public records. Now, 98% of them, 98% of the highest achievers don't have late payments, but if they do, they're over four years old. So some of you sweating it and you're like, oh man, I'm trying to get this 800 before I buy this house. I got one late payment from four years ago or whatnot. You're probably okay you want to look at something else. And we're going to talk about what those are. Now, for the most part, 609creditpair.com. Get those late payments off, right? No late payments, no public records, no collections, no missed payments. Is it possible? Yes, because I've been there where you are with the 15 negative accounts and three credit bureaus and had to dispute this negative stuff and change my life, okay? So you can do it, all right? Appreciate it. John J. Doe says, Jerome's in the house. Watch your mouth, Jerome. Watch your mouth, Jerome, all right? Keep it tight. Keep it tight. Okay. Enough of this nonsense. Playing too many games. People come for the 800 score, Brad. Okay. So 35% on-time payment history. We're clear about that. Just keep it clean. Keep it tight. Pay on time. Now we're going to break down on how and what you're going to pay and the specifics of that. Okay. 30% is your amount of debt. Okay. 30% is amount of debt. Now, do you need some amount of debt? Yes. And we're going to be specific about that number. Okay, we're going to get specific about what that number needs to be, the amount of debt that you need to have. Okay, 30%. You're thinking, hey, man, I'm running around, zero, no debt. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, me either. I pay it off on time, but you got to have, you got to hit a specific cap, a specific amount. So some people think, oh, man, I can have perfect credit and I can get that 800 score if I'm just buying, you know, a couple bucks here, a couple bucks there. Uh -uh. I'm going to tell you the specifics. Okay, 
So 30% of your amount of debt. Now, people say, hey, keep it under 30%. Keep it under 10%, right? Keep it keep it 0%. Okay, less than 7% credit utilization. If you want an 800 credit score, you can't be at 10%. You have to be less than 7%. So some people say, hey, 30% of your total debt per card, like Julie saying, 30%, you can't get an 800 credit score. You want an 800 credit score, you got to be less than 7%. And FICO tells you this stuff. My FICO tells you this. I got this right from FICO, okay? So if you want that 800 credit score and you're using your debt and you get up to 8%, 9%, you know that 800 might not be in your future. So less than 7%, okay? Let's see. Got a few questions. And hey, put your questions up because what we're going to do after this, we're going to do your Q&A. We're going to do your questions and answer what you need, all right? So less than 7%. Now, accounts with balances. So you're saying, Brandon, hey, man, I'll pay off all my balances. Yeah, me too. But you need three accounts with balances. Three. Three for the 800 credit score. So not two. And not one. And this is the thing. You're like, hey, man, I'll just use one credit card. You know, I'll use a few thousand bucks on one credit card. You're better off spreading out over three cards. See the trick? See what you have to learn? Some people say use five cards, six cards. My FICO tells you. The highest achievers use three cards, and this is true because I experimented with it. Okay, I used two cards readily. I would use it. I would get boom, boom. I would get my gas, get my food, get my entertainment, get my shirts, get my Jerome shirts. Okay, get whatever I need for the month. I'm paying it off on time, and I had one card that was paying my Spotify. Okay, that I would pay off my Spotify, so I got music, so I can kick it. All right, listen to my music. You can do the same thing. You can have one card that's designed for your Netflix, your Hulus, your 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 um, Spotify's, like I do, whatever it is, your Apple Music, whatever you're doing. And I don't say get crazy, okay? My Spotify's, you know, ten bucks, or whatever, okay? But you pay that, so that's one card used. Then I was using another card, boom, 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 and I was using another card. But then I was like, man, what am I using this other card for? Let me just use one card. I got my revolving, I'll be fine. Well, there's the thing. When I went down to two cards, the credit score came down. And so I started using that third card, boom, credit score went back up, okay? So that's how you're going to be up in the 800s. Three, so less than 7%, three balances with that you're using, okay? Three cards with balances, okay? Now, here's the amount, okay? We're talking about the specific amount. So total balances on revolving and open-end accounts, all right? So total balances of revolving and open-end accounts, you have to owe less then $2,500, okay? So if you owe $2,600, okay, $2,700, three grand, you're not gonna be up in that that top echelon, that 800, okay? And so you're saying, well, who would have $3,000 with a revolving crowded? Well, here's the thing. This is why you come here for the guy that's done it. Capital One Spark Card is a business card, but it reports to your personal stuff, okay? So I don't recommend that. I recommend the Amexes, I recommend the Chases in the city, the other business. But you might be charging up stuff for your business and it's affecting your personal. So now you have 3,000, 4,000 in utilization, revolving, and this is your revolving and open end accounts. So it's the open end charge cards, the Amex accounts, the accounts that are not with a quote unquote preset spending limit, okay? So the idea here is that with all of that, with everything, you can keep it under $2,500, okay? So you're thinking, okay, well, Brandon, I'm, I'm spacing it out. I'm, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. You know, I'm creeping up over that. You want to make sure you don't creep up over that because if you're trying to get that 800 score, and we'll talk about why you might want to get that 800 credit score here in a minute, uh, you don't want to creep over 2,500. So let's just review. 35% on-time payment history, on-time all the time. 30% is your amount of debt, 7% utilization or less, 3 accounts with balances that you utilize, okay? You don't have to maintain a balance. And the balances shouldn't creep over $2,500, right? That's 65% of your credit right there. That's 65% right there, how you're gonna get that 800 score. But Brandon, there's more, okay? There's more, what else do I do? Well, here we go. 15% of your length of credit history is weighed into the MyFICO algorithm, all right? 15% Length of credit history. Now, this is something I need to work on myself. Okay, it's twenty five hundred uh, altogether balances. So someone asks, is it twenty five hundred dollars per card? No, twenty five hundred dollars altogether. So you want to maintain 
less than 7% credit utilization, but the total, I'm gonna say it again, total balance of your revolving credit cards and open end cards, the highest level, the 800 achievers owe less, they owe less than $2,500, okay? So if you're revolving credit and you, you owe $500, $600, you're good. You owe 10 grand on some cards, uh, over all your cards, you're too high. Even if your utilization is under 7%, and that's what we have to be clear about. Even if your utilization percent is under 7%, okay? Three accounts or credit cards. This is what's great. Three accounts, three accounts, three accounts. So you have an account that is an open-end card, a store card, uh, a, morg a mortgage, something, right? Now, your total amount of balances is on credit cards. Your total amount on balances is on revolving and open end cards. Okay. So your mortgage and your, your uh, car note are not weighed into that. And you see how confusing it can be. You see why it's so challenging. Yeah. So I didn't have, hey, Cornita's on the Awesome Life group checking in. It's great. So I didn't have a mortgage. I didn't have any outstanding loans. So if I don't use my credit cards, I don't have three, three accounts, okay? So three accounts, all under $2,500, okay? Now, I'm gonna make sure that I get questions, okay? You're good? We're good with this so far? Okay. Got it, yeah, 7% utilization, three accounts uh, with balances with no more than $2,500, great. Now you're, and this is the thing, you can have 7% utilization, three accounts with balances, but your credit cards, your credit cards can't be over $2,500. You can have a mortgage, you can have a car note, they're bigger balances, that's fine, and those are accounts that are open, and then maybe you have a credit card that has $2,500 or less, right? That's the idea, okay? Now, seven, or, sorry, 15% uh, is your credit history, okay? So credit history, something I need to work on, I'm a younger guy, so I don't have all this credit history, okay? And this is, we're gonna be real specific on what you need to do to get an 800, okay? The average age of your accounts, the average age of your accounts. So all my accounts, my loans, my uh, credit cards, my open-end cards, my store cards, they put it all together and they say, okay, you got about seven years, your average age. Because I opened some cards recently because I was doing all the travel miles, right? So I was doing these travel miles, I was opening it up and now my average age went down. But it's okay because the average age that you need for the 800 is nine years or more, nine years or more. So sure, maybe you've got some old open or closed stuff, okay? Average age of your accounts that can be closed too, okay? Of everything that you've got, you're able to use that and say maybe you open up one card and your average age is still 10 years nine years, but it's got to be nine years or more. FICO will tell you this. And this is why I say, if you can invest in the MyFICO app, invest in it. Because if you're going for a house or a car, and some people are buying really big items, you want to know how to get that 800 score. Now, if you're watching the replay, thank you so much. And if this video is helping you out, get that 800 score, put a thumbs up. Okay. I really appreciate you because I want to make sure that we get the best content out here. All right. Now, this 800 score needs a nice, juicy, old account. Okay, age of oldest account time since your oldest account was opened. Okay, so your oldest account might be closed right now. I'll say this again. Your oldest account can be closed, but from when it was opened, it needs to be 25 years old or older. That's the highest achievers. Now, I'm going to tell you what, I don't have that and I have 800, okay? I don't have that, okay? I need, you know, like another 10 years or so, okay? It's 15% and it's not the biggest part of it. Age of oldest accounts, but the age of oldest accounts is important. And I'll tell you what, when I repaired my credit and my score was still up in that range over the 800, I didn't have no 25 years, it can still be achieved because 35% is payment history, 30% is amount of debt. And if you know the skills that we have and the secrets that we have right here, 7% utilization, three, uh, three accounts with balances, and you're not over $2,500 on your credit cards, you know that you're going to max out. You're going to have exceptional payment history, exceptional amount of debt, 
and then good or very good history. Like myself, a very good uh, credit history, right? Length, length of credit history, okay? So don't sweat it. You can still get up in the 800s. I'm speaking from experience, okay? So you can do it. Now, you're saying, Brandon, that's only 80%, okay? Trying to get 100%. You need to get that 100% to get up to uh, 800, okay? Now, someone is asking how long this is. Usually we go for you know a good hour or whatnot. So if you want to put up your questions, and does, does that count for your... AUs, average age. Okay, so my FICO says they, they're like, well, we don't really put the AU in there. What I've seen, the AU help, okay? So you'll hear, well, eh, maybe not. We have seen it help. The reason is, is because the funding can be different than your score as well. So when they pull the report, they will see that you have a trend line that's 20 years or 25 years or, or 15 years or five years. Our, for ours, is five years, five years or more. Okay. Um, let's see here. Any questions on that? Do mortgages count? Mortgages, mortgages count for your history. Yes. So your length of credit, I actually got mine. I'll be honest. I got mine from student loans. Okay. My student loans are old. So I have very old student loans. That's why I got all the negative, nasty, erroneous stuff off my student loans. I know people who didn't, and here's the thing. Some people have really high stuff and they need to to take it off and they need to take it, take care of it. Okay. But if you have a low student loan and you paid it off, okay. Some people out there have this is like a thousand bucks or 2000 bucks or whatever. It wasn't big. You went to an inexpensive state school, like some of my friends or myself, then um, that student loan could be 15 years old. Your mortgage could be 25 years old. That counts. Okay. I have a bunch of hard inquiries. Okay. We're going to get to inquiries here in a minute. So, so far, 35% on-time payment history, 30% is your amount of debt, 15% is your length of credit history. 10% is the amount of new credit. And this is something I need to work on as well because like I talked about, um, and I, you know, I'm still in the 800s, but what I talked about is I had the travel miles card. So I was getting new cards. And here's the thing, if you got good credit, put it to work for you. Get your car notes, get your mortgages, get what you need. I'm not telling you to go out there and be spending crazy, okay? What I'm saying is, if you need something for your life, that's why you've got the good credit. So you can get the car so you can get to and from work or to and from your business. you got the house to put a roof over your head. If you're looking to get a house and you want to get that 800 score, and that's what we're talking about now, that's why I'm looking into it because I'm like, in a year or two, I might need to get me into a, a situation where I'm not paying rent all the time, just like you, paying rent all the time, right? Get that equity. Worry about that kind of stuff, yeah? So if you're making a huge purchase like this, it behooves you to know how to get the 800, maybe to invest in the MyFICO app because 10% is the amount of new credit, okay? So the age of your most recent open account, the age of your most recent open account. So since your newest account was open, the highest achievers, two years and six months, so two and a half years since the most recent opened account. So you're saying, Brandon, I opened an account last year. Hey, I feel you. You know, I'm in the same boat. I need another year to really be exceptional. Now, I'm very good. You can still be very good, you know, where you're at like, oh, I opened my last account a year or maybe six months ago or whatever. <laughs> That's interesting. Blah, blah. Oh, sorry, I got distracted there. Um, so age of your most recently opened account, two and a half years. Okay. Now, you can still be good, very good. And again, this is only 10%. So maybe you got a new car note. And I tell you guys, don't be going to these dealers. People still emailing me and be like, hey, man, I'm thinking about going to this dealer and getting financed with them. I'm like, no, 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 no. And they asked, I got an email. and was like, can I make sure that the dealer only runs one or two banks? I'm like, no, you can't. They will lie to you flat out. I'm saying it. They won't tell you the truth. They will not tell you the truth. So you want to maintain that good two and a half years or maybe a year. So you're not applying for credit all the time because they think it's a risk. Okay, I don't see it as risky if you're doing all the other stuff right and that's why this is only 10%. So make sure you're doing all the other stuff right, okay? Now, the number of recent inquiries, here we go. Your application for credits in the past year. So your application for credit in the past year. 70% of the people at the highest FICO achievers, the 800 people, the people at the 800 club, didn't apply, did not apply for credit in the past year. And you say, Brandon, what the heck is that? So now I can't apply for credit. What they say is that potentially, if you're applying for credit more often, it's more risky. 
So you're just playing. It's like gas and pedal, right? Gas and clutch. You're just figuring it out. Okay. Maybe you need a good car. You get one inquiry. You're good. Maybe next year in a year, you're getting your mortgage. Maybe next year, you're getting a couple credit cards, right? Now, some of you have to rebuild quicker. I'm talking about people who are like already kind of up there. Some of you are going to have to rebuild. You're going to have to get all the nasty stuff off and start boom, 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 putting this, the good stuff on there. Because revolving credit payment history, your credit utilization, your um, on-time payment history, all the negative items, that's 80%. We're talking about the last 10, 20% here. That's how you're going to get up to 800. So don't take this as, oh, well, you know, my credit repair, I can't be, you know, adding no new trade lines. No, that's different. And we'll get into that. Okay, we always, we have great videos on credit repair here. So hit the subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications for more awesome live streams like this, where I can teach you about 800 score, where I can teach you about business credit, where I can teach you, where I can show you how to apply for certain things. We're going to get into it in 2019. I'm telling you what, these live streams for these subscribe tribe members in these notification squad individuals are going to get nice and juicy. Okay, already we're starting 800s. Okay, so we've, we're doing it. Okay, 35% payment history. 30% amount of debt, 15% of credit history, 10% of new credit, all right? Now, they even say, my FICO even says, when I click their little thing, they have a little question mark. I click the little question mark because I do all my investigation. They say, look, the amount of inquiries you have, because um, they're not assuming you're going to a dealership and, and shopping around, but if you have a couple few inquiries, they're not going to say, hey, look, th this is going to drag you down. They think the payment history, the amount of debt, the credit length, that's more that's more important to them so as long as you don't get a shotgun blast of credit inquires you're going to be all right okay don't get scared to use your credit because that will have the adverse effect as well all right ah this is a good question lena j reed so we're talking about the five and we're talking about the 200 uh excuse me 25 years of payment uh on-time payment history okay so lena recently got settlement for student loan and paid Okay, so it's paid off. Okay, it's paid off. It was 25 years old, but does not appear in my credit reports. Can I get it reported? You can. You're going to have to talk to them about these loan holders and make them report it and talk to them about it. Okay? Talk to them. Say, I need this. You're affecting. I know. I didn't watch the live stream. All right? I know that 25 years of payment history is important. And make sure if you have any late payments, you get those taken care of. Goodwill letters, dispute the late payments, 609, 609creditrepair.com, right? Get the late payment dispute letter in our Beyond Committed package. Have us do it for you. Cornita's done it. I've done it. Um, it's possible. We've seen people's uh, student loans, some have come all the way off. Some people have gotten their late payments off and updated a positive. We've seen it. That's what keeps my credit history, my amount, my age of my oldest account so high. I'm a young man, but that's how I'm one of the highest achievers. So yeah, you want to get that all reported. Now, here's the thing. Not everything has to be reported, but everything that is reported must be 100% accurate. Okay? So not everything has to be reported, but everything that is reported must be 100% accurate, right? So you want to push on them to report it. Okay, Lena. So this is the thing. Never paid, only paid settlement recently. So it's all paid off. Okay? So you want to make sure... <laughs> Okay. You want to make sure that it's all good on time payment history. Yeah. Because what did we talk about payment history? 35% is payment history. No missed payments. So if you have something that's older, because you might have a little bit more age and weight to your credit reports, you might want to go that route. Okay. All right. Now, payment history. Uh, amount of debt, length of credit history, amount of new credit, and 10%, the last 10%. Does anybody know what the last 10% is? Okay. Anybody here want to take a guess? Want to put it up? Put it up in the in the questions in the live chat, in the live stream. 10% credit. Huh? What is it? <laughs> Inquires. 10% is your credit. Mix. Lana got it. Lena. Oh, maybe I'm saying Lena. 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 Maybe it's Lena. Is your credit mix? Credit utilization, credit inquiries, inquiries are coming up. Credit mix, 10% is your credit mix. And that's what's so important. A lot of people don't know. It's your credit mix, okay? So I'm going to slow this one down just a little bit because we're coming to the end of the credit mix. A lot of people don't understand this, okay? Revolving accounts. And when I say revolving accounts, 
we're talking about credit cards, store cards, things that you can carry a balance on. Okay, not an installment, installment loan. Okay, revolving credit. Credit bureaus like to see revolving credit. Okay, so 10% is credit mix. Revolving accounts, number of revolving accounts being used or reported. All right. So I here's the thing. I looked at my own report this morning. I have some closed accounts that I closed. When I was younger, I didn't know. Don't be looking at me. Jerome, Jerome, don't be looking at me like I closed some clouds, okay? Different era, okay? But yeah, I didn't need them anymore. I wasn't going to use them. I closed them. And it hurt my score for a little bit, but yeah, look, I'm back up in the 800s. Everything's good. You can do the same. You, you can always rebuild. It's an ongoing process. So number being used or reported, the highest achievers, and here we go. We're about to break some myths. People don't know exactly. Anybody want to take a guess at how many revolving accounts need to be used or reported? Basically reported. How many accounts? How many revolving accounts need to be on your credit for you to be up in that 800 credit score. Daniel says six. Bertie says two. And you need higher. Jared says, Lisa Kidd says 12. Yes, it's 12. It's 12, 12 revolving accounts. Okay, 12. Brother says to five, two, four, five. Yeah, 12. So you want to have use or have used in the past 12 good revolving accounts. So this is challenging. You're saying, Brandon, well, look, every time I open a card, it, it, you know, 70% of highest FICO achievers haven't applied for credit in the past year, but I need 12 revolving accounts. Okay. So this is the thing. They want to see history. Okay. Oh, I need a six. They want to see the history, right? So they want to see history, history, history. They want to see time. They don't want to give an 800 credit score to an individual who's 21. Typically, typically. Okay. Now, can you be 700, 760, 780? Yes. We're talking about 800. We're talking about elite here. Okay. You want 800. I'll tell you why you want 800. Because I went to my credit union and they told me that when you apply for a car, a car loan, and you, if you have above 800, um, they were giving out the best rates. I think it was like one point something percent. If you had over 800, it was like one, it was something crazy low. It was almost free. Okay, like 1%, 1.5%, one, one 800. And they said, if you have an 800, you get approved immediately. You can do it online, you get approved immediately. They don't look at nothing. 800, that's it. It's the same thing with the mortgage. I was looking at it. If you have an 800, you can get the absolute lowest rates on some, some, I'm not saying all, I'm saying some mortgage loans, okay? There are certain ones that aren't gonna change, like my VA, right, or um, uh, FHA. Okay, that, that might change a little bit, but you're still gonna get a really good, uh, percentage. Okay. I don't see anyone charging over 5% or 4% or whatever like that. Okay. But the 800 is going to make a difference. It really is. Okay. So 12, 12, 12 revolving accounts, either they've been utilized on time, hundred percent on time and they're closed now. Maybe you had a store card. Here's the thing too. Maybe you had a store card that was closed. I had a comp USA card back in the day that store was closed. So I ain't no keeping that account open. Okay. So that would be it's the fool hearted to try and keep it. It's closed out. Can't use it nowhere, but I don't get penalized for it. Okay. It's still one of the 12 accounts. Okay. Now I have more than to get up in that 800. You need a 12 or more. Okay. It could be more. Okay. It doesn't have to be exactly 12. It could be 12 or more. All right. Now 10% credit mix installment loans, including mortgages. Let's talk about this. Your installment loans, including mortgage installment loans, including mortgages being used or reported. Maybe you paid off your house. You shouldn't be penalized for that. Okay, maybe paid off your, your student loans or your, like we talked about, or your um, car notes, okay? Maybe you've had a couple of cars. Some people have had and paid off two or three car notes. And you're thinking, nah, what? That's crazy. No, I mean, if you've got a, a, a household, right? And maybe you and a, a significant other, I don't know, husband, wife, I don't know, whoever, right? I'm not, just men and women here. You've got that significant other. You guys both own both cars. That could be both reporting on your credit. If y'all pay it on time, every time, all the time and pay it off, that's two installment loans right for you. And y'all have the mortgage, that's three installment loans. Okay, so how many installment loans, Brandon? How many installment loans do they look at to get an 800 score? And it's important because we're talking about elite. You're gonna have the bank cards and all this good stuff and open end cards. But if you don't have no installment loans, they might not get you up in the 800. So five, okay? 
five installment loans. Yeah, I didn't want I didn't want to ask for the guess because five installment loans is a lot. You're thinking that's a lot, man. It's a lot, and it is a lot. Thank you very much, Yogi, for the super chat. I appreciate you with the tiger. I appreciate it. Um, excellent, and thank you very much, um, Lena, for the super chat as well. So five installment loans. This is wild. Five. And you're thinking, well, you know, how could you do? I just point out three real quick. Maybe you got a couple cars and a mortgage in a family in a household. That's possible. And maybe you're using utilizing selflender.com like we've talked about. People get a boost of 30 points, 50 points in there. I'm not saying everybody, but a lot of people do. It's because it's an installment loan. Credit mix is important when you're rebuilding your credit, when you're maintaining good credit. Okay. So five. Five. Maybe we talked about maybe you had a student loan. It's all good on time payment history. You're all good. You're okay with it. Okay. Daniel asked, do student loan loans account? Yes, they do. So maybe you got a loan or two of student loans. Okay. I don't have no uh, mortgage. I don't have a car note that was paid off or anything. I always got buckets and just ran them into the ground and paid cash for, I had a, a Geo Metro one time. Okay. I don't, I don't even have a car anymore. Okay. So but here's the thing. Um, yes, yeah, student loans count, car notes count, mortgages count. And that's what they're seeing. They're seeing the people with the highest achieving ha are able to manage credit. They're able to utilize it. They're able to um, get things and pay things off over time. So they're looking at somebody who is uh, low risk. Who's low risk? I bet a lot of our parents are considered low risks. If they're using their credit, paid off their mortgage, paid off their cars, have gone through it all, they're like, oh, they know how to manage it. I would say I'm not loaning no 18-year-old my money, right? So this is what you got to think of. This is the perception that you need to show when you're getting your credit score and your credit squared away, okay? Now, there's one other thing here. Anyone else want to take a guess at what your credit mix is, okay? So we talked about revolving accounts. All right, we talked about installment loans. Does paid off loans count? Yes, paid off loans count. Paid off loans count, okay? Closed paid off accounts count, okay? All right, Lavelle Gordon, the utilization. We didn't talk about utilization, brother. You about 20 minutes late on that one. It's self-lender after first payment. See, this is what I'm talking about, installment loans. Roy did a self-lender. After first payment, his score went up 20 points because all of a sudden he's got a reporting, not only has a revolving credit, his mix is stronger now with an installment loan. I think a lot of people, <laughs> Lavelle, it's all good, brother. I'm just I'm just playing with you. Uh, and utilize a lot of people talk about using it. It's important, okay? Store card, that's a good, that's a good guess. Store cards are actually your, util your revolving accounts. And that's a very good guess. Store cards, it's actually the inverse of store cards. It's bank-issued credit cards. Good guess, Summer. Bank-issued credit cards. So, look, we talked about 12 revolving accounts. And the 12 revolving accounts can be a mix of store cards, bank cards, whatever, right? That CompUSA card I had back in the day, a store card I had back in the day. But you need bank cards, bank credit cards to reach the upper echelon of 800. Anybody want to guess, of the 12 revolving accounts... Anyone want to guess how many bank issued credit cards you need to have to get the best score up in the 800s in 2019? Vince's got an 801. Oh, wow. Great. Congratulations, brother. So, three. So, people are saying three, two. Jared says two. Miss Clay says two. Oh, Vince said he had. Okay. Three, two. And this Tyrone is close with six. Pretty close. Two, three, four. See, and this is why we want to talk about this because a lot of people don't even know uh, eight. That's close. People, was six and eight. It was real close. Uh, seven. Miss Clay got it. Yeah, she put the pieces together. Seven. So that's the thing. People, um, and it, it was including myself, want to get that 800, but we don't know. They don't outright tell us. You need seven credit cards from a bank. Lavelle's like, wow, yeah, seven credit. So of the 12 revolving accounts, Really only, what, five? So eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, right? Only five are supposed to be other, like store cards, okay? So seven bank-issued credit cards. And those can be in the mix of revolving credit, 
and your open end. And when I say open end, they could be charge cards like Amex. Okay, you could have a couple Amex charge cards, a few uh, revolving credit cards from banks. Okay, you get your seven. And you get your store cards too, 12 revolving accounts. Have you hit a line of credit, question mark? I don't know, a line of credit, line of credit. <clears throat> Great. So just a review because it's a lot. And some people are coming in now. And if you're coming in now, please hit the subscribe button, that bell for notifications because you want it, you're going to want it from what banks. Yeah, that would be wild if they had a, a breakdown of what banks. Uh, you know, any of the banks, any of the big banks, the cities, the, uh, the Chases, the Amexes, the um, Discovers, the, the banks, they're basically saying not store cards. The stuff with the Visa logo, the MasterCard logo, the Discover logo, the... Uh, Okay, Kevin. So no, so so no answers for Say Stream, uh, brother. We're gonna get into Q and A here. Barclays School. We're gonna get into Q and A here too after the eight hundred people. I, I wanted to make sure I gave out a good, um, you know, talk on how to get the eight hundred twenty nineteen. We're just um, yeah, completing that. So let's see. You said does freezing Say Stream not inquires, uh, Kevin? It might help. Okay. Um, the the thing is is that it is designed for more for the uh, inquiry, so is core logic, all right? So, um, <laughs> just that one, yeah, I got you. Uh, just that one, um, you can, oh wow, that's really cool, I don't know, the moons and stuff, oh, that's adorable, I like it. All oh, the roses wilted, okay. So let's get back into it, 800. So, credit union cards, same as bank cards, yes! Good question, this is what's, this is what's important, is you get your questions answered here live. Yes, that counts, I have, um, um, they're considered ba they're bank cards, okay? They're not. They're basically not store cards, okay? They want to see it issued from a bank, credit union, because your credit union is giving you a card with the logo, with the Visa logo on it, with the Mastercard logo on it, with the Amex logo. Well, yeah, some do. I think um, not Penn. Navy Fed has Amexes, or maybe it's Penn. Penn Credit Union has Amexes. It doesn't. It doesn't matter, okay? It it really doesn't. Ten. Uh, 12 revolving accounts. They also want to see five installment loans and uh, seven of those 12 need to be bank cards. Okay. Navy Fed does the Amex. Karina knows because she's got the, she got it. Navy Fed has it. That's what I knew. See, I knew it. I knew it. All right. So just a quick review and then we're going to get on to the Q&A. 35% on-time payment history. I always say, I always phrase it on-time payment history. Okay. 30% of your amount of debt, less than 7% utilization, three balances, three accounts with balances, and your total revolving, total credit cards, total open end cards, less than $2,500. 15% is your length of credit, okay? And your 10% is amount of credit, new credit, excuse me, 10% is your amount of new credit. Most people have not, uh, most of the highest achievers, have the 800s have not applied for credit in the last year, all right? And then 10% is your credit mix, which we've talked about. Your open-end cards, your revolving credit cards, your store cards, um, your, your um, mix, your credit mix. So that breaks down the 800, uh, your 800 credit score, 100%. Sorry, I was just looking at the question here. A yogi has a question asked, Let me see. Yogi, I'm sorry. I think I missed your question here. Gerald was just letting me know. I missed the question. Okay. So that's what, if you have more questions about the 800, hit me up in the comments here. If you're watching the replay, hit me up in the comments. Email me. Let me make sure everybody has my email, of course. I got so excited about this 800. Breaking the code. And see, some of these things we just don't know. And it's important to know. I think it's so important. It changes your life, Okay. Do they have to be major banks, regional banks like PNC? Are, they're good, too. They're good, too. They count. They count, okay? Yogi, where is your question, sir? I'm trying to look for it. Um, and I'm not sure if I have, let's see, Yogi, okay. Message retracted. Oh, okay. I can't see it. All right. Yogi retracted his message. Well, thank you very much for the super chat. I appreciate it. So let's get into your Q's and A's. I appreciate it. Again, got this new Keep It Tight Jerome shirt, all right? You know, keep it tight, Jerome, all right? Let's see here. Let's see, get into some of your questions, okay? Uh, 
And I hope you're excited. I am hope you're excited to get your 800 score, okay? Do not use Ultra FICO. It gives up some of your privacy rights with regards to actual financial stat status, okay? Yeah, that's the thing. Ultra FICO is optional. 2019, they're trying to roll out this Ultra FICO. They're trying to get more information. What they're trying to say is, hey, it's going to help people out who are less desirable. Let us see your bank accounts and your statements. Look, we know how to achieve the 800. They don't outright tell you, you have to get their app and you have to go through and I had to learn it and, and piece it together. But you know the breakdown now. You know how the game is played. And if you have payment history issues, if you have inquiry issues, if you have public records, collections, charge-offs, all that stuff, 609creditrepair.com. Get those negative nasty items off. Get that beyond committed package, walk you through the whole process, or we can do this work for you at the awesomelifegroup.com. And we advise on things like Self Lender, uh, My Jewelers Club card, the Hut and Chase, uh, New Coast Direct, these types of things that give you these primary trade lines. Now you've got all that credit. And when you're utilizing it, when you're paying your little bills on for your three accounts, right? You're paying your stuff. You don't go over your 7% and you keep it under $2,500, right? So they, they play games and they try to come out with stuff confusing people, but you guys are the elite. You guys are the subscribe tribe. You know what it is to really have that 800 credit score, okay? When you consolidate your student loans, can it drop your credit age history? Okay, usually, usually those consolidated loans, the old loans stay there. Okay, from what I've seen, and let me know if they stayed on yours, but they usually stay there. Um, if if you were to remove them, then it might affect your score because then the consolidated student loan is a little bit younger. Yeah, but for the most part, they stay there. Now, the problem is you probably consolidate because you have late payments. So you want to dispute those late payments, get those negative late payments off so you can have this great on-time payment history and you can have all this age of credit because, again, Highest level achievers, 800, 25 years, right? You can still be good. You can still have 10 years, 15 years, five years. You can still do it. You can still get a great score. You could still potentially have 800. But we're talking about hit those points. You'll pretty much have that 800, okay? Uh, <laughs> all right. I've got, okay, cool. Hmm. Ah, this is a good question. So how do you get a credit card with a good limit, such as 3,000 or 5,000, when you have a 720 plus score, but my file is thin, please help. Okay, so first off, if you don't have a trade line that big already, they get worried about giving you a trade line that big already, yeah? So things have changed a little bit, obviously. Uh, they don't give credit cards out to 18 year olds really as much, okay? Not quite as much. It's more like 21. There was a whole act change under Obama, which is good because I had credit cards when I was 18, 19. It's silly. So usually about 21, you start building. So your, your file might be thin or maybe you didn't utilize credit. Maybe that's maybe this other thing. This is what I say. Get a trade line, a primary one, like my Jewelers Club card. It's 5K. Now you got one, 5K. You can get another one, New Coast Direct, 5K. So now you've got two 5Ks. They look at that. They look at your stuff and they say, because the reason I know is because I've talked to reconsideration lines for individuals and for people that I know. And they say, oh, well, we wanted to see more primary history for your payments, okay? Because we're rebuilding for this person. They're doing great now. It's different. That was years ago. But you have your own, you'll have your own trade lines. So you'll be able to say, hey, look, you're not giving me anything that someone else wouldn't be giving me, all right? And now you have the 720 plus, you have the history, you can get an AU trade line, all right? It's gonna boost it up, it's gonna make you look a little bit more desirable, okay? And and if you don't have an installment loan, that self lender is important too. The mix is important, all the stuff that we've talked about. You might have a 720 plus, but you might be missing certain things, okay? Thin file, do you have a loan? Do you have an installment loan? The self lender can help, that kind of stuff, okay? Matt Jetson, thank you very much for the super chat. If you have a question, brother, let me know. I'll look through. I know we've got a few questions, but I appreciate you. Appreciate you very much. Uh, 
All righty. Sorry, I'm just scrolling through some questions. Wow, that's great. I Paul143 says, finally catching you online. That's great. I'm glad. I feel like more people are getting the notifications. Me and my girl's goal is 700 this year and super motivated. Okay. Sent off my first letters January 2nd. Seems like a bunch of things were removed and waiting to see my score rise. Thank you. That's great. Good to hear. Very good to hear. Um, 700, 700 club, huge, massive. Okay. And that's what's so great about knowing how the algorithm is broken down a bit more to get up in the 800. When you shoot that high and you come into the 700s, you're going to be super happy. Believe me, you can do a lot in the 700s. You can do a lot, okay? Ah, Ace Marketing LLC. Hey, Brandon, how do I find out my score? It's, uh, you know, different with all three agencies. TransUnion has my highest score. The other two are close, but not to each other. Okay, look, I have three different scores too. Everybody has three different scores. I go into my FICO, TransUnion is a certain one. Equifax is a certain one. Um, experience a certain one. Okay, what is your FICO? It's the middle one. It's the middle score. When you're looking at your score, it's usually the middle one. Now, there's a thing. Certain banks, certain credit unions look at certain Credit bureaus, okay? Our credit union uses, I believe, Experian. I think it was Experian, or maybe it was TransUnion. She, I'm gonna have to look into it again. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's Experian. One hard inquiry, they look into Experian, they look at it one time, and that's where they're getting their FICO score from, and that's where they're getting their history from. So now you know, oh, let me focus on that. But if you're just generally trying to figure out where your score is, it's the middle score. So if you got 815, and you got 800 and you got 805 in the middle, it's 805 in the middle. Okay. That's just, that would be your score. So if you're like, oh, what's your credit score? Oh, about 805. Okay. But you use so many different scores. There's a, a FICO 2 for mortgages. There's a FICO 8. There's a FICO 8 bank card rate. There's a there's an auto FICO 8. There's a FICO 8 or there's a FICO 2 auto. I mean, if you have them on like FICO, you can see all the scores and what your score is. There's a FICO 9 that isn't used as much. I mean, there's a lot of stuff. So they do it to confuse. They do it to help the lenders get people credit worthy, maybe not get people as credit worthy, protect their lenders, their customers. We're the consumer, the banks and the lenders are the customers and the customer is always right, right? So we have to fight harder. But that's what it is, the middle score, all right? Lisa says, I have several credit cards all in good standing, but I want to close four accounts. Will this hurt my score? Now, one, why do you want to close the accounts? Do they have like annual fees on them or something? Because if they're all paid off and they're helping you there, they're helping you. Yeah, if you close the accounts, they're going to hurt your score in the short term. Yes. Um, you'll maintain all your good on-time payment history, but you might as well let it ride out if you're not getting charged for it, right? Um, Lisa, let, let me know if you have any other stuff and you have my email. So just make sure. Okay. The adept seven do apartment agencies report to, uh, report your rental history. Typically not typically not. I actually heard a leasing agent say this. Okay. The young man didn't understand. He's like, this is going to help my credit history. He's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you're going to have rental history. You're going to have rental history. It's how he, you'll have a rental history, but your rental history may not automatically be on your credit reports. You might have to find a third party that'll help you, like Rental Karma, or uh, I'm trying to think of Rent Trackers. What's the other one? There's other Rental Car. Yeah, Rental Karma is what the diary said that. But that's so. Do apartment agencies report rental history? Not usually, not all the time. Now, if it's negative, they can't wait to put it on there, right? So check with your apartment agency. Check with your apartment. See what they're doing. All right. And I appreciate the super chat. Okay. Uh, a vet. Will dealerships still run your credit as much if you choose to lease instead of financing? That's a great question. I haven't personally leased a vehicle. If anybody knows the answer to this, will a dealership still run your credit as much if you choose to lease instead of finance? Has anyone gone through that scenario? My opinion would be they might not. Okay. Here's why they might not. Because what they're actually doing is they're trying to run your credit a bunch to get a loan that is advantageous for the dealership. So they run your credit a bunch, you can barely qualify, and they're like, oh, well, this is the best we could get for you. And so now they're making money on the back end. 
with the lease that's not really there for them, uh, they might not be running it through 15 different, 15 million different banks. They're just looking at your credits to make sure you qualify so you can be leased. So I doubt that what they're probably, they're not probably running with a bunch of different banks. What they're probably doing is just looking at your credit. They pull it once, they pull up their little thing to look at it. All right, cool, your credit's good, right? They're not running it with a bunch of different banks because they're not trying to get you financing. My um, my belief would be that they look at it, it's in, that's it, that's the done, okay? But be careful. I'm always cautious. That's one of the reasons I'm uh, very cautious about leasing. Ask them too. I think a lot of people get intimidated by people. You understand, they're just people. They're just human beings like you. Ask them. I ask people questions all the time. People do not want to deal with me. They don't. I'll ask them, are you going to run my, I don't care if I sound stupid. Are you going to run my credit if I lease it? They, people laugh at me. I don't, a, I don't care. I'm a she, okay? I don't care. Laugh at me because I'm not walking out of here with 15 million hard inquiries. You can run my credit? Shit. I asked if they were going to run my credit for a test drive one time. They laughed at me. They looked at me like I was crazy. I'm not crazy. I'm not leaving this dealership with no hard inquiries, okay? You're not going to run my credit, all right? No, I need a social. Okay. You're saying, okay. You know, hard inquiries, taking hard inquiries. I ask all the time. I sound like a crazy person. But then they start to realize what I'm worried about. And if they want to make a sale, they say, okay, well, you know, uh, no, you're going to be okay. We'll take care of you, okay? Should you freeze your, should you freeze your credit before you file bankruptcy? Will this keep it from reporting to the credit agencies? It's a good question. Um, unfortunately, uh, probably not. Okay, so it helps when you freeze LexisNexis to dispute, potentially, uh, you wanna dispute. But here's the thing, if you absolutely have to file, I understand, you might need to, but you might not need to, okay? You might not need to. Uh, you can dispute negative items. Sometimes they, right? A lot of times they can't be verified. They come off the report, they can't be verified. How are they gonna make you pay, okay? So think about some of those things. I'm not, you have your lawyers, you're going through your thing, you deal, okay? Okay. Oh, there's Yogi. Yogi has a question. Okay. My credit karma said I need more accounts. So I got three secured cards totaling 1500 bucks. Should I also get a secured loan? I'm 44 years old and only have four accounts on file. Okay. Only four accounts on file. Now we know, we know highest 800 to get up there. So you climb in the ladder. If 800 is here, you still want to climb that ladder. We know. At some point, 12 revolving accounts, that includes your store cards, your store cards and your bank cards, five installment loans, okay? And you're thinking about maybe getting a self-lender. I think it will help. I think it would help your score. Pardon me. It's <coughs> <coughs> had some rain recently and stirred up my sinus issue, all right? So credit karma also may not be the most accurate. I got you right from my FICO. I got this stuff right from FICO. So be cautious about what they tell you. But in general, yeah, you need to start building your credit and building the mix and a secure loan would help and self lender would probably help you out. Yeah. If you're 44 and you have that thin file, you might want to start thinking about how you can build up a long-term credit history. Like, uh, Lena was talking about, hey, you know, I actually paid off a loan that's 25 years old. Can I get that history on there, right? She's going to finagle and play with it and figure that out, okay? So I appreciate you. I appreciate you all watching this, okay? Thank you so much for the thumbs up. Thank you for hitting the subscribe button. Hit the subscribe button now because we're going to go over more amazing things, more stuff that's probably going to shock you. How to get more business credit, how to get funding, how you can change your life. 609creditrepair.com. We can do the work for you at the Awesome Life Group, okay? Let's see. Do paid off car loans drop off over time? Kevin asks. Your on-time payment history stays on there almost indefinitely, forever. So you, you paid off your note, your car note, it's gonna stay there, okay? You got this, okay? You got this. Best score was 801, Vincent. That's great. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Interesting. Okay, Tony. Uh, Brandon, what's up, man? Quick question. I purchased everything and went on to attempt my credit score. TransUnion it says, unfortunately, your credit request can't be fulfilled at this time. Did you go right to credit or uh, TransUnion? You're looking at my FICO? Where are you looking? Where are you looking for this, brother? Huh? Credit card? Where is this? Okay. Um, you might want to try another credit monitoring service. Credit check total is actually pretty good. Okay. Identity IQ is pretty good. Privacy guard is pretty good. Pretty good. Okay. I'm not going to say the best. All right. Um, they all have their advantages and disadvantages. My FICO is really good, but they also have some of their disadvantages too, because uh, the credit reports only come out quarterly and then you have to buy it, buy it if you don't get the credit and it's a little bit more expensive. So they all have their ups and downs. Okay. It's hard to say which one's the goat, right? Um, let's see what we have. Let's see, just one question, okay. Ah, Yogi. So each template to target an item on your report, right? So Yogi's asking about, hey, what letters? The Beyond Committed Package has everything that you want to take care of, right? Your addresses, your late payments, your um, collections, your bankruptcies. Uh, and I'm not saying you have it, right? If you have uh, negative anything, any negative reporting, you can focus in on. And that will dictate and change your utilization. A lot of people don't understand. If you have a balance out there on a charge off, that can affect your utilization still or in a collection. So when you get that off, that's affecting your utilization. That's affecting your total accounts with balances. That's affecting your average age. That's affecting your uh, recent history. Okay. So yes, you can target some of this stuff, but other things you want to rebuild on, yeah. So if you like we talked about yoga, if you don't have certain things, you're gonna to want to get those on there. Pinky says, "Please, please, please get that Beyond Committed package. I live it. All right." Oh, I think I might have to sneeze again. Okay, how do I get approved for a bank card with a score of six seventeen? Okay, so this is good. Certain banks are more lenient now. If your score is 617, perhaps you have some negative stuff, Nicole. You need to take that care of that, 609creditpair.com, and we can do it for you. The Awesome Life Group. Now, if you don't have any negatives and you just need to build and you don't have an installment loan, self lender is going to be huge. Also, if you have more revolving, like we talked about, more revolving accounts, new Coast Direct, Mind Jewelers Club Card, Ox Publishing, Hut and Chase, okay? Self lender is five right there. That's going to boost up. That could potentially boost up your score. AU could boost up your score. Okay. Now, from what I've seen, some of the bigger banks can be a little bit more lenient. And I'm not saying which one specifically, but in general, some of them like B of A, Chase, those can be a little bit more lenient on the score. Okay. Navy Fed, if you're part of Navy Fed, some of the some of those things, some of those uh, federal deals and Penn Fed and this kind of stuff. They can be a little bit more lenient and they give bigger lines. Navy Fed gives big, big lines. I'm like, shoot, I should have got a Navy Fed card years ago. But, um, you know, I had the USA or whatever. USA is cool, uh, whatnot. So this is awesome. Kevin White said 80K credit limit here with just six cards. Fantastic work. <laughs> Try to open another account. Well, that's up to you, Kevin. I mean, if you're going for the top, top elite, eventually over time, you probably want to get to that 12 revolving accounts. Okay. But that's up to you. I'm not telling you to do whatever you want, brother. If you got, you got, you know, if you're close already or you don't need it or whatever, it's, that's up to you. Okay. The secretary of education says that for VA, 100% P and T forgiveness, that they will pay back any payments made by students. Does this mean that late payments will be charged? Change. Okay, late payments probably should be changed, Ricky, because they're backdating stuff. Yeah, but they might not do it automatically. This is the problem. You know, a lot of people have these questions. Should this happen? Should that? Yeah, probably, but they might not do it automatically. They might not want to help you out. So you're going to have to go in there and finagle and finesse, right? Or go in harder and dispute. So when I say finagle, finesse, that's the goodwill is calling them, talking to them. When you go in hard, hardcore, it's the disputes, the 609 letters, the late payment letters, the CFPB complaints, the better business complaints, the FTC complaints, the uh, talking to the VA, talking to your representative, that kind of stuff. They want to play games, okay? All right. Wow. Got oh, I like these little emojis. These are cool. Cool. 
Cool, cool, cool. We're going to just maybe do a couple more questions. And uh, having a good time on the live stream. Really appreciate you all for being here. Uh, thank you for all the thumbs up. Thank you. It really helps out. So we'll do a few more questions here. Let's see. Ah, when filling when filling disputes, do you dispute the bankruptcy myself by itself? Okay, by itself, or can you add it on the regular dispute letters? Good question. All right, now how do you want to play this bankruptcy? So maybe you've got, and I'm going to assume it's a discharge bankruptcy at this point. We'll talk about dismissed bankruptcy in a minute, and we'll talk about uh, the difference between thirteen and seven. So let's get into bankruptcy. So. Chapter seven bankruptcy, it's all discharges done, it's over, you're getting a fresh start, but now you want it off your reports, okay? It's gonna be housed at LexisNexis for sure, okay? We've seen it there. We've seen it come out of LexisNexis. Once it's out of there, you can dispute your accounts included in the bankruptcy. At the same time, you disputed with LexisNexis, you already updated your addresses, okay? So if you're not living where you were living with the bankruptcy was, you update your addresses. Okay, so now your address is updated, it's outside of LexisNexis, and you've disputed the accounts included in the bankruptcy. Now, all of a sudden, they don't have accounts included with the bankruptcy. They don't have a, a bankruptcy in LexisNexis. So now where are they going? They have nothing. Yeah, then you can dispute the bankruptcy. Now, you can put it all on the dispute letters together if, let's say, you have other stuff. People do. Some people have gotten their accounts off of the bankruptcy, and they have other negative charge-offs or other negative items, late payments or whatever. Inside of LexisNexis, they still dispute their bankruptcy and they put it on their 609 letter with something else. Maybe a late payment of a student loan, maybe a late payment of something else, some open account that they're trying to get. So you can, you can, as long as you've gone through that process, getting it out of LexisNexis, getting off the addresses, taking care of the accounts included at the bankruptcy. So it is possible, okay? And some people don't have accounts included in bankruptcy. Sometimes those have fallen off. Because they say the bankruptcy might stay there 10 years, but the accounts are only supposed to stay there. Okay, they might stay there seven years, but they're not really supposed to stay there, right? So they could fall off. Also, when they tell you stuff like that, oh, it could stay 10 years or seven years or whatever, that's assuming that it's 100% accurate or that you don't dispute it or they don't find some error with it. And that's what we talk about, the error in Chapter 13. Chapter 13 is the liabilities change, okay, because it's like a payment plan, right? You're paying. So if the liabilities don't change properly, that can be a reason to dispute. So if they're reporting inaccurate liabilities, they're not showing the right report dates, they're not showing the right address, they're not showing, remember, 100% accurate, okay, 100% accurate. There are over 300 things that the bureaus have to adhere to when making sure certain things are in certain places and then compliance and all this stuff, okay? Dismissed bankruptcy is even different, okay? So if you have dismissed bankruptcy, we have specific dismissed bankruptcy letters in our Beyond Committed Package, okay? This dismissed bankruptcy stuff it's very specific about the wording of them not being able to find any information that exists with wherever you filed bankruptcy, okay? So let's say you filed and it was dismissed. That means it wasn't ever considered um, adjudicated or real in the eyes of the law. And if they can't prove something in the eyes of the law, how are they going to legally keep this on your report? And I have some Dismiss bankruptcy letters that we've talked about before. Let me see if I get into it with you. We might not need to. I'm pretty sure that everyone is pretty well versed on that. Um, but liabilities for Chapter 13, seven discharge, we talked about. And dismiss bankruptcy is very specific. It was never 100% adjudicated or considered real in the eyes of the state or the county or wherever it is. The courthouse they've already considered it gone. So you can't consider that something real. It can't stay on there. Dismissed bankruptcies tend to come off very, very quickly. Uh, along with other bankruptcies we have seen, bankruptcies come off. If you're watching the replay or you're coming back in later or you missed it, earlier on, there was a gentleman who said he got his bankruptcy office report. So it happens. It can happen, okay? Let's see here. Jedi Lungs 420. Working on the last negative. Nice. Then on to the inquiries. Excellent work. Let's see. 
Email, great. Jared's taking care of some stuff as well. Excellent, excellent. Let's see here. Sorry, it's a, the chat kind of gets a little, and there's a lot of questions, so it will. There we go. Let me see here. Really mad. Experian was breached and I have my credit locked and frozen. That's interesting. Uh, Experian was breached a few years ago, honestly. Uh, there was a settlement. I have a video coming out, but, you know, for the subscribe tribe here, I put it out early, okay? I puts it out early. Get it tight, Jordan. Get tight. Get tight, okay? Experian has some settlement letters coming out to individuals that potentially were breached. So if you were breached, which you may or may not have been, um, they kept it real quiet. I know everybody knew about Equifax, but Experian, this happened a few years ago. So they have a class action settlement lawsuit. There was a lawsuit that was settled. Now, some people will get, I think it's like 140 bucks. Others might be able to claim up to $10,000, okay? A lot of people aren't talking about this yet. I got a video coming out. I wanted to give you guys this information first. So you might get a little card in the mail. It's a postcard summary of a settlement. And you might get it and you might say, hey, you... Uh, are part of this collection and lawsuit settlement. You can get up to 140 bucks, X, Y, and Z. They might have monitoring or something. Who knows? Okay. If you get that, it's the real deal. Experian was compromised a few years ago. Then they started the process. The lawsuit took forever and they finally settled December 2018. So in 2019, they're just sending out um, settlement postcards. Okay. In this, uh, Maria, that's what we're talking about. My husband filed bankruptcy, but he canceled it. So it's dismissed, but it's on the credit report as if it went through when it didn't. Uh, yeah. See, that's the thing is that's a dismissed bankruptcy. It's canceled. It's not supposed to be on the report. You can send in specific dismissed bankruptcy letters, 609creditpair.com. We got it in the beyond committed package. Okay. And we've done the work for individuals as well. Okay. Ah, this is good. My son says, I work for a dealership. If you are leasing, they will only submit your application to the lease company, which is usually always through the brand manufacturer. Okay. So yeah. And that's, that's what I figured too. They're just making sure that your credit's okay. They're not trying to shop you around. They're just making sure that your credit's okay. That's a way that they feel comfortable and can trust you. So this person, someone knows. So there you go. So leasing a car is a way around all those hard inquiries. Leasing a vehicle. Now, I'm not for or against it. It depends on your situation, but think about when you lease a vehicle because after the end of three years or five years, if you decide not to buy the car, it's like renting and you might not have anything in you, of your possession, right? The leasing with the option to buy is interesting because if you buy it, you then have a vehicle you could sell and you have equity in the vehicle or whatever, right? You have property. Um, that was one of the reasons of purchasing vehicles over leasing is that at the end of it, let's say you've put money into it, much like a home, you can still sell it for something or trade it in or trade it up, right? So that's the options, but some people like leasing because they take care of it and fix it or whatever. And maybe it's a corporate lease. Companies lease cars all the time. It's easier for them because they don't want to maintain uh, a, depreciating, a depreciating asset, okay? So they don't have to worry about depreciating it and all that. Sometimes it is helpful because they can write the depreciation off, okay? Just depends on your specific scenario, but sometimes a lease helps, okay? I was one of the lucky ones who was involved in the Experian breach. Okay, Nicole. Well, you might have some settlement money coming to you. Make sure you lock up. Anyone, anyone can lock up their credit reports at any time now. The locking it up, the freezing it up is free nowadays, okay? Lock it up. And and you might get a settlement. And if you feel like um, you need to deal with it and go forward and say, hey, I have more damages. There was, you know, some ID theft stuff, there's damages. Then you might have to go that route, get a lawyer and get damages and seek damages. I know people, like I was saying, um, I think the cap was 10 grand. So there might be, or maybe you have some other damages that were even worse. But as long as um, you can lock it up, you were okay, just, you know, you'll be fine. You keep it, keep it moving. And it sucks. But here's the thing, our information's out there. That's why the Ultra FICO, we don't want to give them more information, right? We're trying to make sure that they don't breach our stuff so they don't just take whatever they want. It's it's crazy. Ruben, all right, that's in our Beyond Committed Package. Okay, Ruben, second round. You get everything you need in that Beyond Committed Package, all right? Yeah. All right. All right. 
Clifford. You might have to go through another round, okay? Here's the thing. If the bureaus are playing games and they want to not adhere, we can go right to the collectors, okay? So some individuals have those collection validation letters because they got that beyond committed package, right? So you can send that stuff. You can send that stuff into the collectors and have them push on their side. And I see you, Hector. I already just signed up for Awesome Life Group. Can't wait to see the awesome results. Excellent. All right. Excellent. Look forward to working with you as well. So they push on their side, on the collector side. They also have to cease all collection activity after you put in your dispute directly with them to get validation. And then on the uh, credit bureau side, they are supposed to do their own investigation too at the same time when you send your 609 letter. So you send it in all at the same time, making it very difficult for them to verify within 30 days, supposedly verify. Yeah. Oh man, vacation rental maintenance fees, timeshares. Man, I do not, I'm not a fan of timeshares, but uh, I didn't pay last year the rental maintenance fees. Collection agency hounded me this year, hounded me this year. Maintenance fees are, are due and they're adding fees from last year that I didn't pay. Okay. So first of all, there is a, I, look, I'm not a, a timeshare expert. Okay. But I do understand that there are some organizations out there that help people get out of their timeshares. I think there's a simple, um, there's a way to get your name off the deed, the, the deed or the, the stuff if you want out of it. Okay. If they're hounding you, you can dispute that kind of stuff. All right. Nicole, uh, Nicole, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to put this out. I'm not going to say what that is, but I'm going to ask you, Nicole, did you get that notification from, oh, timeshares paid off? Man. Wow. That's crazy. Uh, you're gonna have to make some decisions about your timeshare if you want to keep paying those maintenance fees or or whatnot. Um, you can ask to see an original instrument of indebtedness and see if they have it, see if they can prove it. But if you have a paid timeshare, I don't know, are you utilizing it? That's up to you. You know, ah, not a fan of timeshares. You probably paid it. You probably paid it off a while ago though, before all the credit mile travel hack and stuff and all the internet before the internet years. Uh, Nicole, where did you see this uh, social security issue? Not utilizing it. Oof. I don't know, man. You might want to get out from under that. You might want to sell that timeshare. It's up to you, though. Nicole, where did you see this security number out there? Okay. Because I've seen this. I got an alert like this, too. Did you get on my FICO? Because um, sometimes that's not 100% true. It'll be close to your number. Uh, I, I would be cautious. I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure about that. Okay. All right. Ah, Brenda, late payment challenge. Whoa, challenge late payment on Navy Fed calls them to close my account. Okay. Uh, start with the goodwill letters first. Navy Fed is working with people in the military, right? See what they'll help you. USAA helped me. USAA helped me. Okay, I'm going to tell you what USAA did for me. I late payments. It went to a charge off situation. Um, I paid it and they opened up a new card and transferred over the history of the good on time payment history there and uh, got took the old card off. You'd be surprised what can happen. OK, so start with them first, do goodwill letters. And then if you have to, you could dispute it. All right. I'm new to credit thing, but I'm trying to see how am I supposed to go about building my credit. I know it's like 400 or something or 500, if I'm not mistaken. I know I got AT&T on my uh, negative accounts. Okay. Now, 350 to about eight, or is it 300 to 850? Hold on. Check my notes. What is it? 300 to 850 is usually the FICO scoring range. Okay. So 400 is pretty low. 500 is pretty low. Negative items, right? They're bringing you down. They're bringing you down. The idea here is to dispute, get these negative, erroneous things off, okay? Nice, Chair. I appreciate that. Just do your research on the timeshares. want to be very cautious about those companies that help. Yes. Yes. Very cautious. Get those negative items off, but be building like we talked about. And I think maybe you came in late. Um, you came in late and um, maybe you missed some of the presentation about the 800 score. 
But the idea here is you're going to want a good mix. You're going to want your revolving accounts. You're going to want your in installment loans, and you're going to want your uh, Kyle's just joining now. Um, you're going to want your open end cards. Yeah. Negative stuff off a good positive history. Um, that's the most simplest way to put it. The more specifics you can watch on this channel and you'll be able to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications for new content comes out. And for when we go live again, we put out the next segment. Okay. Brenda, you're very welcome. Uh, Kyle's just showing up now. People just showing up now. Julie, I think anytime, I think really anytime is good to get good on-time payment history on there. Okay, so if you're thinking about self-lending now, when you have the ability, when your budget allows, it's a good time. Even if you needed to pause for you know a month or so to kind of do the self-lending thing first and then come back, right? That's very important. The negative stuff coming off is important and getting the good on-time payment history is important, okay? It's a good time pretty much any time. That history is going to shine through more as the negative stuff comes off, but the good positive stuff is important any which way you cut it, right? Because as time goes on, as time goes out, that negative stuff weighs less and less and less. Something that we probably miss is that 98% of the highest achievers of the 800 score, even if they have a late or a delinquent, it's four years old. Okay, it's over four years old, right? 98%, 98%, okay? One, two, will I see? Oh, Walter, yo, Big B, I was added to an AU in August, and it has just been added to Equifax. When will I see it on the other two bureaus, or if at all? It's a chase card. Okay. So you probably will if it was just added to Equifax. Now, if it was just added to Equifax, in the next couple of weeks, it might report to the other ones. And what you could do, you're an AU. Maybe you have a card, maybe you don't, but you can still call to talk to Chase. Okay, you'd be surprised at how much you um, can talk to them about your account. You can talk to them and you say, hey, this is reporting my Equifax, now reporting here. When's it going to report? Oh, we didn't even know, so sorry. We'll take care of that right away. Okay, they might get a little confused. All right, they might not, you got to understand there's thousands, right? Tens of thousands of credit lines that they're working on. Lots of stuff. So you'll see inaccuracies. You'll see stuff that's not reporting. You'll see stuff that's erroneous, right? So this is why we do what we do. All right, I'm just going to stay a little bit longer, not too much more. And again, I just want to say thank you. I really want to say thank you. We're, we're, we're really strong here. The Subscribe Tribe is amazing. Um, you guys help me keep doing what I'm doing. A lot of love, a lot of likes, a lot of positivity here. People are staying on with us. We're watching these, these uh, live streams every weekend when I know people could be out having a good time, chilling, all that stuff. But they're dedicated. You guys are dedicated to getting your credit squared away and making your dreams come true. It will change your life. There will be that opportunity when you get to the other side because people are getting to the other side. People are com commenting in. The Subscribe Tribe stays here to support others that are moving along and this process as well. I, we have people that come on the live stream and say, hey, I'm up in the 700s and I'm getting my house, I'm getting my car. But they're still watching this. And when I'm putting out information on credit repair and building their credit, right, and to help others as well. So thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for the thumbs up. If you're watching the replay, thank you as well. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell for notifications. So you don't just have to watch the replay. You can actually watch it on the live stream on the weekend. So Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Appreciate the subscribe tribe. We're getting big, strong. I love it. I love it. Studio time. Studio time retracted. Oh, let's see. Okay, well, uh, let's see here. God bless you, Brandon, coming in late. Okay, this is great. Uh, send validation letters to creditors, but they did not properly validate. What's my next step? Thanks. Okay. So you, and you're going into another round. So you still have some time. Okay. Number one, we have a collector fails to validate letter. So you can send that in to the bureaus to let them know. Let them know. The other thing is you can complain to the CFPB if they didn't properly validate. Okay. That will give you a boost along with your letters. Birdie. Yes. Is it possible to stop garnishment if they missed court date. Yes. Did that specifically happen to you or are you asking for somebody else? 
Um, it is possible. The idea here is it's a legal issue, right? So that's you're going to have to deal with the courts, potentially a lawyer, potentially vacate judgments, that kind of stuff, right? I'm not a lawyer, so you'll have to get legal advice. But the idea here is a judgment could be vacated, a motion to dismiss on grounds of, you know, without proper validation, without proper verification, not being properly served. Um, there are things to appeal, appeal a case. I know people know, understand that, right? Appeal a case. So people know. So is it possible? Yes, but it's gonna you know, have to do a little work, right? Just like anything else, you have to do a little work. And again, consult with your attorneys as this is a, a legal issue now, okay? <laughs> we all we all had all our we had all of our early twenties to party. Let's be great and responsible now. Thanks, Brandon. Yeah. One drummer, thank you. Went from 668 to 774 in 2018 using your credit repair package. That's amazing. Amazing. Sorry, I got somebody who's a bamming. Okay. Uh, that's amazing. And that, this is the thing. That's why I'm so excited for the subscribe tribe doing this. Going up in the 700s, getting from okay credit, good credit, to excellent credit. You can do this, you can do this, all right? I want you to be able to do this for yourself, 609creditpair.com. We can do this for you too if you really don't wanna go through the process, you don't have the time, you, you entrepreneur, you're out there, maybe you're a truck driver, maybe you're watching me right now and you're working. Theawesomelifegroup.com, we can take care of you, okay? People in the office right now, my business partner's on the live stream right now, both of them, yeah? We got you on the weekends. We work, we hustle. We want you to succeed. This is what we do. This is what live and breathe. This is our thing, okay? Jerome is up early getting the camera ready. Jerome's up early, keep it tight, all right? Get tight, get tight, all right? That's what we want for you, all right? Let's see what else we got on this uh, Q&A. Nice, Jared's doing some questions as well. We ain't playing no games with the credit room. That's right. I'm playing no games with credit repair. Let's see. Okay. Rent reporters is good. They will backdate two years of your rent history, is what Carl Jr. says. So Carl, Carl Jr. <laughs> Carl's Carl's Jr. Uh, it sounds like a uh, whatever. Carl Jr. says uh, rent reporters is good. Plus, they will backdate two years. So there you go. So if you're looking, you got two years of rental history, right? Two years rental history. You're able to get all this backdated from you like we're talking about. We're able to get you that good history, able to boost your score. And a rent report is something that you're going to probably do anyway. If you're not paying a mortgage, you're probably paying rent for the most part. Most people are paying something to, you know keep a roof over the head for the most part. So that's gonna get you up there and help boost your score. So that's something to look into, okay? Nice, God bless you too, I appreciate that. <laughs> Nicole, I'm so confused about this credit stuff because Credit Karma will say one thing, Experian will say another and so on and so on. That's the thing, we cut through all of it. So I don't, I'm pretty sure you're on the whole thing. I went to my FICO. That's the thing. A lot of people go around. They say, well, I got credit karma. I got experience. I got the, why ain't going to my FICO, right? Now I'm not saying maybe it's your budget's different. Okay. Maybe. Okay. I understand. But the, my FICO is where, where it's at. That's the real deal stuff. The reason everybody else is talking differently is because either they're using a different version of FICO or they're playing games to mess with their own algorithm to give you information that makes them money. Like credit karma is saying, Hey, they're telling Yogi, hey, you need more of this, more of that. Apply here, right? Credit Karma's got the, you could click the apply right there for their secure cards, for their credit cards, whatever. They're affiliated with that stuff probably, okay? I'm not gonna say for sure. I don't, I didn't read all the legal language and all that stuff, so I don't wanna say anything. But if they are, they're making money on that. How do they make money if it's a, it's a, or maybe it's an ad, right? Maybe it's an ad. Either way, they're making money through the ad or the click or whatever. That's how they're making their money. It ain't free. Someone's paying for credit karma. Someone's paying credit karma. Someone's paying those people. Okay. So if it's not the consumer, then maybe it's their customers, the banks, the stuff that they're advertising. So yeah, maybe it's in their best interest to muck it all up and confuse it. Okay. Experience Bureau. My FICO's 
different because if they're the real FICO, right, and they want people to use the FICO scores out there, right, all the lenders and all that stuff, yeah, they're going to try and tell you at least something, right, at least something. They're going to tell you their actual algorithm because there's all sorts of things that they do, okay? But this is what we've talked about here. And make sure if you didn't get to watch the replay, all right, watch the replay because that's going to change your ability to understand what you need. Because if you're confused and all that stuff. Oh, I see. So if you're confused about all that, okay, then make sure that either you watch this or watch it again or whatnot and get with me. Email me. You know what? I haven't put my email Let's see. Let me make sure you have my email. Make sure everybody has my email. Info. All right. And thank you for hanging with me so long. I appreciate you guys kicking in here for over an hour with me. I really, I really like it. All right. It's great to be on the live chat with you guys. Let's see. Jared's got all that. Lavelle, brother, come on now. I just have been talking about Credit Karma. I, I have a Capital One card. Credit Karma says I have an excellent chance of getting another. Shall I apply for it? Man, don't be trusting them. Credit Karma's, brother. Look, Credit Karma's a good ballpark, but don't trust when they say, hey, you have a good chance of getting this because I have seen people not get it, and now they're upset because they got that hard inquiry on there, okay? You should know if you have a good chance. Credit Karma is asking if you want it. They say you have a good chance. You should know, brother. I know people, I look at their reports and I say, you could probably get this, okay? And they'll be like, oh yeah, I know I can get this. I got a 780. I, I Years ago, I worked, well, it's years, but yeah, a couple of years. And you've seen some testimonials of some videos of people. They looked at their MyFICOs. They knew their FICO scores. They knew their bank card scores. They knew when they applied, they could get it. Lavelle, you can call up you can call. I've talked to Bank of America representatives. I've asked them, hey, this is the credit score. This is my history. Do you think I can get this credit card? They'll say yes or no. A lot of times they'll say, yeah, you have a good chance and you apply and you get it. They want you to be credit worthy. Go ahead, call them up. Say you have a 600 credit score. They'll be like, oh, you may not get it. Or Lavelle, you might have that 700. You'd be like, hey, man, I can get that. Okay. Don't trust Credit Karma. All right. They're fine for ballpark, you know, whatever. Let's see. All right, got your book. Gonna get the Beyond Committed package. Clean it up. Thank you, uh, Corliss Davis, and get that 800 plus. You're awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah, Krishna Aiken. Thank you. I watch your videos every day. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'm noticing Jared's taking care of a lot of questions. Jared's learn, learning a lot. That's good. Okay. Should I send my, yeah, perfect. Should I send my fail to validate letter with my next round? Yes, you can definitely do that. Okay, you definitely can do that. Let's see, I'm trying to find studio time. Okay, studio time, retract the message. So Jared must have taken care of it, great. Cool, 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 okay. Raquita Waters, thank you. Randy, you're the real deal. Okay, let me see, let me just, you can get my email. You know I'm going to have to get off and do the uh, emails here pretty soon. I'm going to have to get off the live stream and get into the emails on the weekend. I'm the one that works the weekends, right? We have some staff on the weekend, but we're not trying to work them to death. I work to death. I don't get tired. I don't get sick. I work. We, we don't play no games with these credit pair. No games with your credit pair. No games with the bureaus. We're getting this stuff squared away. Let's see. Need some trade lines? Yeah, you're gonna have to build credit, right? You only have one car loan. Need info? Okay, cool. Let me make sure you have my email. And again, I'll give you a list of how you can get your own primaries, AUs, self lenders, the hunt and chases, the new coast right? all that good stuff, all of it. Plus, how you can get that 800 credit score in 2019. Okay, this has been amazing, guys. What? An awesome, oh wait, I think, okay, yeah. Sorry if my typing is out. What an awesome Saturday, what an awesome weekend. I appreciate you all for being here. Thank you so much. Again, we're gonna sign off this Saturday. This was how you can get your 
how do I get mine? All right, 800 credit score. This is how you can get your 800 credit score in 2019. I'm surprised. I, I hope this surprised you, maybe shocked you, got you excited. You can do this, okay? Get those negative, erroneous, nasty, unverified items off at 609creditpair.com or we can do the work for you at theawesomelifegroup.com. All right, this video is helping you out. You're enjoying it. You watch the replay all the way through. Please give a thumbs up. Helps me keep doing what I'm doing. Hit the subscribe button and the bell for notifications for the next time I go live so you can get the next juicy piece of information. All right. I appreciate you all. I'm going to let you go and enjoy the rest of your weekend. We are going to kick these bureaus. We're going to, okay, 2019 is our year. All right. To say the least, 2019 is our year. Okay. So until I see you in person, y'all, I will see you on the other side. Thank you. Take care.